going on guys? It's K-Dub here with another episode of Crypto Zombie. So today is Sunday. Don't get the Sunday scaries just yet though. I have an incredible episode today. I'm so excited to share all these different things I've found out, like literally, this is going to be really cool. You want to stick around for it. We're going to talk about some myths that are going to definitely get debunked about Bitcoin, market cap, volume. Also talking about uh, you know, Bitcoin being more expensive to mine than gold. On top of that, price action wise, which is why I know you guys are super interested, I want to talk about three possible scenarios that could potentially play out short to midterm for Bitcoin that could potentially affect all of the cryptos as well. You definitely want to stick around for that. Before we move on, I want to say thank you so much though to everyone. You know, you guys were the ones that said, K Dub, you need to set up a Lightning Network tipin.me account. So I did. And wow. Guys, thank you so much for the donations. And it's not even just the donations. I do appreciate them. It's the fact that you guys are actually setting up a Lightning Network account, putting money in it, using it. It's so freaking awesome. And you guys know, obviously, I love giving back just as much as you give to the channel. I did tell you guys once we got above 50,000 subscribers, I wanted to do something special. But I want you to tell me what you want. So we're obviously above 50K. Um, what do you guys want to do? Do you guys want to do another Ledger, Ledger Nano S type giveaway live stream type thing? Or you let me know. I'm down for it. Let's do something. Also, just so you know, guys, tomorrow is uh, the drawing for the Ledger Nano S. So any comments in the videos, you guys are eligible for that. That was enough rambling. Wow, that was a long intro. Let's get into the markets. Let's see what's going on. There is some mild red. Don't freak out. Binance is just taking all the profits. <laughs> I'm half kidding on that. But actually, if we give it a quick refresh live, seriously, you'll see the market cap is still basically where it was yesterday. We haven't really moved at all. Bitcoin dominance still slipping. Altcoins feeling the love. Okay, 24-hour volume is down, but that's to be expected on the weekends. However, that is a concern, and we're going to get into that in just a second. But looking at these massive gainers, we have Polymath, Ravencoin, Binance Coin, Power Ledger, Basic Attention Token, Decentraland, Aurora, KuCoin, Zero X, Stratus, you name it, guys. We are just making gains today across the board. Now, talking about Bitcoin, boring old Bitcoin, but let's see what's happening because we have fallen out of this channel. So is this something to be worried about? Well, we have caught support here on this new line. The question is for how long and with the volume, you know, will we have enough to actually keep us above? I'm not sure if I have the, no, I don't have it on here. Let me go to the other one. Yeah, so you can clearly see the volume is falling. This is a pretty scary sign as we're getting closer and closer to the close of this wedge, right? So are we gonna have a drop? down. I want to talk about that. And there's some pretty good theories to sort of support what may happen short to midterm. One of the things that I've seen floating around is sort of the um, approaching to this um Right here, we have a 20 weekly moving average. So currently, that's exactly where we are. And the volume has dropped off. But if we are able to somehow maintain and, and, and not have this affect us, we still have this wedge closing out plus this major neckline that we've been following from back here. So that is short term. But let's take this for example. Galaxy, you may follow him. I actually don't follow Galaxy, but I, but I have heard of uh, you know some of his TA. Now he's saying according to Bolkowski's study, more than 60% of ascending triangles with declining volume end up breaking upwards with an average price rise of 35%. That gives us a target of $5,500 Bitcoin once the breakout is confirmed. And I will drop this below for you. Now that does beg the question, but what about the other 40% of the time, right? I don't know. Do you really want to gamble on that? Well, I have a great video to show you guys. You may be bef uh, you may be familiar with Bob Lucas. Um, if you're not following him, definitely get subscribed. But I'm going to show you this right here. And I think you're going to be quite shocked to see what he has to say. And believe it or not, even the worst case scenario isn't really that bad. So I'm going to jump. I'm going to just stop talking. And you guys need to definitely watch this video. And currently what I'm seeing is that we have a day 18 high that has yet to be exceeded in the cycle. Now we do have a nice little uptrend developing here, but it's really coming on a lack of any significant volume. And I'm not seeing any real uh, significant momentum or urgency to buy this market. And by day 43, I really would have expected it to have broken out significantly by this point if we were in a new type of trend or uptrend. So what does that mean exactly? It means that I think we still can perhaps see a move higher over the next few days to break the day 18 high and essentially negate 
or remove the, the top there because the new cycle high would be in the future. And also to break above the day nine high that we have back in December for the price cycle. But I think if we do get up into this area over the next few days, that this will act more as a bull trap in the short term than it will anything else because we have a cycle low due at some point in April. And it's coming up within the next sort of two, two to four weeks, in fact. So it's coming up pretty quickly. So I think if we do get this move up, I think we're going to come back down and we're going to find a low at some point in this area, hopefully in this area. Remember, cycles are not necessarily about price, they're more about time. So this is the window where we see perhaps the next cycle low. The good news is that if we do pop above and make new highs for 2019, it makes the possibility that we'll see a higher low in the cycle low because we have a higher high. So what we'll be doing is creating kind of this new stepping up trend. So here's a high, high low, high high, um, another higher high here and a higher low. So this would be negated. So we would have a uh, high here, high low, higher high. So this high here would be higher than this one. And then hopefully this low here in April would be higher than these two lows. So then that creates a new trend of higher highs and higher lows, which then brings into, um, into focus of this December lows being the four year cycle low that I've talked about in previous videos. So that's kind of like the bullish scenario that's, that's out there. Let's just draw in for, for the time being a window. Let's just say from April the 2nd, the earliest part, to around April April 23rd. We're going to draw in this big box. This is the timing window for the next cycle low. So I think we certainly find a low below kind of 3,700. I don't see how a low will not sort of form below that range. The question then is how low can it go? And that depends on the four-year cycle as well. But let's just draw it down here just for argument's sake, just so we have a mental and a visual on what the potential is coming up. So how do we get into the lower area of this timing box? So what that might look like is, let's take a different color here. This is kind of your really bearish scenario where essentially we're almost right at the top of the cycle. Or we may even just get a little more out of this. Okay, probably don't exceed the day 18 high and then that keeps it left translated 18 days to the top and then you know kind of double top and then a move lower so in that case then we have a lot more time in the cycle or not, enough time at least left in the cycle to get down deeper into the lows and then the question becomes does the february cycle low become kind of a, a support range and a double bottom or does the december low become a double bottom and sort of a retest of a four-year cycle low and then a move higher okay that is probably my favorite viewpoint right now that preserves the idea that this is the four-year cycle low. This is a retest. And now we've created enough kind of separation between the prior four-year cycle low and where or the prior cycle lows here at 3,100 and where we are now at 40, 40, 50, let's just say. If we get to 4,100 down to this December cycle low point is another thousand dollar drop or around about 20%. That's significant enough if it happens over a short period of time to create enough kind of fear and panic and capitulation on high volume to kind of induce an end to this bear market or this sort of crypto winter. Now, it's, not, never gonna, it's never gonna skyrocket you know, until probably next year, but uh, enough of a decline here for this to create a real sort of a V um, slingshot type of action up into the 4,000 4, range and up towards maybe 5,000 by kind of the early summer months, okay? And lastly, let's look at the ultimate bearish scenario here, which to be honest with you, I think has enough credibility for me to actually be pointing this out. And that is where we get kind of a flush, a real heavy volume, really large significant capitulation and sell-off that um, could be marked as a four-year cycle low uh, at this point. So it's similar to the green bar, it's just that it's steeper, right? We get down to test the December lows quicker and then we kind of just get deeper and deeper into that point and then we come out. And kind of the same kind of end result as the green scenario where you have this V-shaped recovery. Um, but I find that most big bear markets either end in this wide, uh, very wide uh, basing double bottom type pattern or they end in a V. If it ends in the green, which is double bottom, it's probably gonna take a lot longer to sort of come out of that over the summer months. Whereas if we get this really big sell-off, we may even slingshot rapidly up towards 5,000 and beyond. But this here is a scenario that I'm, I'm putting enough weight behind and would not be surprised to see, to be honest with you. And in some ways, I kind of want to see this. I feel like this could bring an end to this bear market once and for all by doing that and get us up into kind of the five, six thousand dollar range and testing, if I zoom out, testing that six thousand dollar area much sooner um, in, in the early portion of a four year cycle as opposed to maybe later in the year as well. So obviously, guys, I sped that video up for time purposes. If it was too fast for you, you can just go into YouTube, you know, slow the video down a little bit. But for time purposes, I didn't want to put the entire video inside this video. But as you could see here, even in the worst scenario, we still end up breaking above the line, right? So I just wanted to point that out for you guys. And you know, short term, yes, we could go down, but just realize where we are in the grand scheme of things. And one of the easiest things you could do is either dollar cost average, or if you're really trying to get the biggest bang for your buck, and you definitely think we're going to go lower, well, then just keep some cash on the side, wait for that confirmed, you know, bottom, and then, you know, you can ladder yourself back in. Obviously not financial advice, but I just wanted to talk about that. And once again, you know, not just talking about just like short term gains, but guys, I want to just make a reference to this. This is monopoly. Okay. What if the bank runs out of money? Some players think the bank is bankrupt if it runs out of money. The bank never goes bankrupt. To continue playing, use slips of paper to keep track of each player's banking transactions. Until the bank has enough paper money to operate again, the banker may also issue new money on slips of ordinary paper. So if you had an opportunity to check out the video yesterday and you saw exactly what has happened to the purchasing power of the dollar over all of this time. In fact, I'll drop it right there if you guys didn't catch it. But yes, this is a system designed as an inflationary currency. 
completely opposite for Bitcoin. So even short term, when you look at things like the halvening coming up one year from May, and just the fact that there's a limited amount of Bitcoin, 21 million, right? Satoshi, he's got his wallet. Four million of them are estimated to potentially be lost forever. You just can't deny those numbers. So really excited, really happy about stuff like that. And I know there's always a little bit of fundamental. We got to talk about fundamental. You can't just talk about technical. Well, in just three weeks, Bloomberg says that traders have already moved 35 million into Bitcoin and Ethereum to interest bearing crypto accounts at BlockFi, right? So they launched this crypto savings account on March 5th and it offers 6% annual interest rate, uh, which is paid out monthly in crypto and compounded to produce a 6.2 annual percentage yield. Now, I know what you're saying to yourself. Well, I don't trust this because of the volatility. Yeah, but it's better than what you're getting in a bank right now. I mean, what are you getting in a savings account? 0.5%, 1%? I've seen some that offer 2%. Ha, joke's on you because we're guaranteed to lose 2 to 3% annually anyway. So at that, in that case, you're really just putting your money in a savings account, hopefully to break even by the end of the year, right? So that is the situation. BlockFi says its accounts are designed for retail investment investors in crypto whales, or not crypto whales, which is cool. So in a new blog post, they actually say that they're introducing a 25 Bitcoin and 500 ETH cap. So how cool is that? They're definitely looking out for the little guy. That is good news. Now, let's talk about what Binance did. Did you guys see what Binance did? Really clever. Some people are going to hate it. Some people are going to love it. Let's talk about it. So basically, what you got to do now is you got to hold Binance tokens. And here's the kicker. You got to hold them for 20 days. And if you hold them for 20 days, then you get a certain amount of token, or excuse me, tickets, right? You can earn a maximum of five tickets. So obviously, this is it right here. So let's say you were gonna own more than 500 tickets. You wanted to be a big whale. Well, I don't have to do the math off the top of my head. It's, I don't know where the price of Binance is gonna be by the time you see this video. It's somewhere around $8,500, give or take when you see this video, okay? Now, think about that, okay? If you have to hold these tokens for 20 days, all right? What is this going to do? Well, it's definitely going to decentivize dumping, right? Why are you going to dump your tokens? Now, here, let's go into the mechanism. How does this work? Well, basically, you're eligible for this. Now, what you do is you can claim lottery tickets. They have numbers. They'll be randomly drawn, obviously, up to five. For each project, Binance is going to announce the maximum number of potential lottery ticket winners and the allocation amount corresponding to each win it, winning ticket. So basically, there'll be a certain amount of tickets per each ICO or IEO, right? And then each ticket will represent a certain amount of tokens. So that's how they're going to do it, right? Now, here's what happens. If your lottery number gets picked, then basically you are saying that you are going to commit to that number. So if you get picked, you're in it. There's no backing out. And what happens when you get in it? Well, obviously, you participate. The Binance tokens that you were holding, well, you lose those tokens, right? But now think about it. If everyone's getting excited and the price of, you know, BNB is rising, well, these guys are either going to want to refill their wallets really quick, right, before the price goes up. Um, because think about it. You're not going to want to dump it because if you dump it and then more people buy in, I don't know. Think about it. You know, the Binance token could keep getting more and more and more and more expensive. So you might want to have a little bit of a hoard on the side. Not financial advice, but I think that's what some people are going to end up doing. So basically, that's the situation that's going on. And I think that regardless of how people feel about Binance, I mean, it's a business and they're clearly creating utility for this damn token. I mean, you could say what you want, but how can you deny this chart in a bear market? You know, numbers don't lie, guys. So that's what's going on. Wanted to bring that to you guys as well. Now, here's something that I wanted to talk about that has been very, very potentially misleading. And after this, I also want to talk about a little bit of, um, you know, rumors that sort of spread about Bitcoin and mining. And we're going to debunk that, okay? So here is a Medium post that came out from this dude over here, JP Thor. And he revealed that Bitcoin... Bitcoin's market cap isn't actually a good metric to measure its dominance. In fact, he uses coin market cap, which basically just multiplies the price by the tokens, right? That's market cap, but it isn't quite as simple, you see. So in his research, he looked at the top 100 cryptos by market cap on a logarithm scale, logarithmic scale, excuse me, and found that trading their volumes, their trading volumes didn't correlate well. Some of the tokens looked that he looked into even had less than 0.1% of the crypto market's daily trading volume, suggesting an artificial market cap. So 
he finally looked at more crypto volumes by market cap and created a new metric that he called the volume weighted cap. He then found there was a power law distribution among them and removed the bottom cryptos over what he called a page one effect associated with the, um, you know, the tokens on coin market cap. Now here it is. I'm going to drop this below. Lots of information. You guys can read this. It's a fun little, fun little article to read, but here it is right here. Lots of graphs, lots of information. You know, he goes into, this is the volume weighted cap right here, um, right here. Yeah, so I'll drop this. But the point I wanted to really show you was right here. So he says, it is clear that Bitcoin is the dominant currency when taking liquidity into account. In terms of share, it's consistently over 80% and trending up. So just taking into account the top five, Bitcoin, the 20% captures over 85% of the market. Thus, it is Pareto distribution and actually much stronger this is only testament to how strong the shelling point around Bitcoin is. So he says, it's in my opinion that Bitcoin will continue to preserve its shelling point and maintain greater than 80% market dominance. Coin market caps, market dominance is flawed since it does not factor in liquidity. So realistically, he's saying it should look something more like, like this, you know, whereas currently, if we go and, and look at it, um, you know, it, it looks something like... Uh, like this, right? So, and even if we look at it most recently, just to the past week, it's still high though, I mean, in comparison, but yeah. So basically that's what he's saying. So moving on, let's debunk some myths here. So this came out from Crypto Asimov. Um, obviously there's no, this wasn't even linked to anything. So you gotta take this with a grain of salt, but I'm looking through here and it says gold mining, 105 billion a year, 475, uh, I don't know what the metric is that they're using, but in annual cost. So you can see that Bitcoin mining is only 4.5 billion. So he says mining gold is 23 times higher than mining Bitcoin, but this is just one person's tweet. So I had a look in it and I dove in and I looked into some of the archives. Well, it appears that there was some data that came out and this is not recent data, but I've dug it up and this is from... Long hash. So they're actually saying that the cost of mining gold is around 87.3 billion, whereas Bitcoin is around 4.3 billion. So long story short, or actually not long story short, because we didn't even get into it yet, but every time a new block is created, we know that 12.5 Bitcoin are created as a reward, correct? So assuming 10 block intervals between blocks, that comes to about $562,000 every hour. They came to this by doing 12.5 Bitcoin multiplied by 7,500 multiplied by six. Earned by miners if miners were using 30%. Now, these are obviously using, it would be a little lower now. It'd be a little lower now, right? Assuming, um, but that's a good thing, actually. So basically, electricity prices vary greatly, but we can assume about one hundred dollars per megawatt hour for the cost of Bitcoin to the ultimate end user. That comes out to about one thousand six hundred eighty-eight megawatt hours to support the Bitcoin blockchain per hour to support the Bitcoin blockchain. If we average one thousand six hundred eighty-eight megawatt hours using the top-down approach and seven thousand megawatt hours using the bottom-up approach, we estimate Bitcoin has a total energy cost of about four thousand three hundred forty-four megawatt. Watt hours. I know you're probably like, what's the point? I'm getting there. Give me a second. Using the estimate of 4,344 megawatt hours lets us estimate that the total annual cost of electricity is about 4.3 billion. There we go. That's how we came to that number. Now let's look at gold. Data taken from Barrick Gold Corporation, which is the world's largest gold mining company. Okay. So in 2017, they produced 5.3 million ounces of gold. Page 32 of their 2017 annual report disclosed gold production costs of 794 ounces or 4.2 billion. Each year, approximately 88 million ounces of gold are mined worldwide. Assuming Barrick 794 costs per ounce, it costs 70 billion per year to mine the world's gold production. Now, I understand that the cost of mining fluctuates over time, so this is not going to be 100% accurate, but regardless, even if we're off by like a few numbers here. You could clearly see the difference right off the bat. We have 4.3 billion as compared to 70 billion. So even if the cost doubled or tripled or even quadrupled for Bitcoin, it's still more expensive for gold, right? So also the thing you need to know is that most of the direct energy costs are from diesel fuel when it comes to actual gold mining. So gold's mining, which is 60 billion of direct energy usage is about 92 million barrels annually, which would be 6 billion uh, by $65 a barrel. So that would consume around 34 billion barrels annually. That means that gold mining direct energy costs diesel fuels are about 0.7% of worldwide oil consumption. Bitcoin in comparison uses about 
versus 0.27. I think we can drop the mic here. I think the argument is done. Clearly, Bitcoin does not consume more energy than mining gold. So using the whole Bitcoin takes too much energy argument is flawed, okay? And besides that, a lot of guys are using to, are moving to green energy anyway, okay? Like hydro and solar and stuff like that. So just wanted to point that out. So the next time somebody says that Bitcoin is too is bad for electricity, you show them this video and you you show them this article, okay? So there we go. That is over with. Now, I want to talk about one little bit of a negative thing. We got to obviously be fair here. It's not all sunshine and rainbows and crypto. Now, I can't confirm this because I don't use Twitch, um, but it's saying that apparently Twitch has recently stopped accepting Bitcoin and Bitcoin Cash payments. So let me know if this article is true or not. I, I don't know. I don't use Twitch, but as options to pay, they've been taken away. Apparently, you could use it. So, you know, there was this tweet that came out a while ago. This was from January of last year, and they were talking about putting those uh, gift cards from grandma to good use, et cetera, and then, you know, look at more payment methods. And you can see down here, they did have the Coinbase logo. People were getting excited. You see this guy, ah, Bitcoin, right? Well, it looks like they've taken it away. So this was spotted by some Reddit users who pointed out that there were no longer there was no longer an ability to pay for subscriptions using cryptos. So while some noted that they didn't even know the company accepted cryptos, others started canceling subscriptions to boycott the company for the move. While it isn't currently clear why Twitch removed the payment option, a low transaction volume could be behind it as most users seemingly didn't even know it was there in the first place. Some have already contacted support to figure out what's going on, looking at the platform's payment options, okay? They also said that Crypto Globe themselves reached out and they have yet to receive a response. So hopefully within the next couple days, we'll know for sure what the heck is going on, okay? So just wanted to point that out, but let's end on some good news. So apparently Google is ramping up crypto integration, user exposure to Bitcoin, Ether, Ripple, XRP, Litecoin, and Cardano. So it says that Google appears to be working on a new way to display more cryptos. You could see that this photo leaked, um, I guess, or some people are seeing this. I'm not seeing this, but uh, you know, somebody searched for XRP and now they saw related searches and you get all these different things, Cardano, Litecoin, Bitcoin, Stellar, IOTA, Dogecoin, Ethereum, et cetera. Um, and then you can see right here, this is just the basic page. And then they also, you know, Google currency uh, conversion tool also has Bitcoin, clearly Bitcoin Cash, Ether and Litecoin as well. You know, not to mention the fact that we know that the Google, uh, the G board did add the Bitcoin logo the other day as well. Um, and they've also been combining big data and search algorithms to crawl large blockchains such as Bitcoin and Ethereum to make them publicly visible. So what does this mean? Are we going to have a Google coin coming out soon? Probably not. But hey, it's nice to know that they're paying attention to cryptocurrency. They're taking it more seriously. They're integrating it into their finance sector and also making potentially searches a lot more user friendly for cryptocurrencies moving forward. So that being said, guys, I want to say thank you so much to joining me on this Sunday episode. Uh, you know, always be careful out there. Obviously, don't panic. You know, I wouldn't be surprised if we do have some kind of a dip incoming relatively soon. It is the weekend. Volume drops off. It's Sunday. You know what happens, guys. So that being said, I want to say thank you to everyone that's been supporting the channel uh, using Basic Attention Token. If you guys haven't downloaded it yet using my link, you do get $5 worth of Basic Attention Token to use on the platform. And also, I'm really sorry for everyone about the Ledger Nano X. Totally sucks now. This has been pushed off. They're not going to be shipping until the end of May. I'm frustrated. I want to use it. But you know, guys, I am still giving away ledgers every day on the channel. So we'll be doing that every week. And if you guys want tomorrow, check it out. We'll be doing that drawing. And I want to remind you guys, we also have another giveaway on the blockchain brief. If you guys haven't subscribed, it's a, it's a newsletter that I write for as well as some other uh, content creators as well. We have this Denarium uh, physical hardware Bitcoin wallet that we're giving away. As you can see right here, I'm telling you this because there's only a week left and there's 179 entries. So if you're interested, you can you can go over and that's totally free. Also, if you guys want, you can subscribe. It's $5 a month and uh, yeah, it's pretty cool. We also have physical copies too, if you're interested. You can, uh, you know, talk to Crypto Candor about that. She's the one that's got that all set up. So that being said, thank you so much again, guys. It is the weekend. I appreciate it. Um, yeah, that's really it. I mean, there's not much to talk about. We talked about a lot today. Binance doing crazy stuff. Bitcoin is not more expensive to mine than gold. Uh, Bitcoin market cap uh, could potentially be higher if we look at the volume, you know, weighted type average thing, right? And uh, yeah, and, and then I also showed you some potentials. You know, Bob Lucas, obviously very well respected in the space. So that's that. 
Let's hop over, see what we're doing. Yeah, we're just chilling, not really doing much, not really doing much. So that being said, guys, thank you so much for coming back to the channel. I freaking love you, you're awesome. Everyone that's been liking, subscribing, and commenting, you guys seriously rock. My name's K-Dub, this is Crypto Zombie. Until next time, stay crypto, and peace out.